All right, we thank you all for joining us this afternoon for this Godspeed celebration and send off for the wonderful Christian Paul Davis, who we all love so much. <laughs> There's always one in the crowd. There's always one. Okay. Let's, uh, I'm going to start right here with a reading from Philippians 1, which reads, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That is what we are here to do today. We are thanking God for Paul and Chris and their partnership here at Trinity and to remind them that we will be praying for them with joy. Welcome everyone to one of those bittersweet days. We are here to celebrate and wish God speed to Paul and Chris Davis. While we are so excited for this next chapter in your lives, we are sad knowing that they won't be local any longer. So let's enjoy this time together today and send them off with all of our love and prayers. So I'd like to invite Pastor Kevin up for a table blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you so much for the gift of this day, for this time together on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we have a taste of that right here. We thank you for the friendship with Paul and Chris, and that will continue to go on. But Lord, we specifically ask your blessing on this food for the hands that prepared it, farmers, ranchers, everyone that made it so easily appear at our table today. Bless this food to our body and us to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. All right, my friends, we're going to get started with the um, program portion of our afternoon. And if you're still eating, that's perfectly fine. Please continue to enjoy your food. Um, Why well, just listen? How's that? So the Davises have been members here at Trinity since 1982, and we are thankful to Dorothy Lorison for leading them here. They were looking for a church home for their family, and according to Amy, the Johnsons and the Rosenbergs helped seal the deal for the Davis family to become members at Trinity. Janet Johnson, who um, unfortunately couldn't be here with us today, said, in addition to being active and vital members of Trinity Lutheran, Chris and Paul have become cherished friends to our family. For many years, we have had season seats to the Los Angeles Master Crowd. Paul and Chris have had seats next to us in the balcony for most of that time. They usually attend the pre-concert lecture and then share the highlights with us so we could more fully enjoy the concert. They have also joined our family for Thanksgiving dinner for several years, traveling to Rancho Cucamonga to share the meal and fellowship. In addition to contributing a dish for the meal, Chris also made candy-filled turkey table favors one year for everyone. When I needed a shirt altered for an event, I called Chris and she did the job. It was a special treat to see that the leftover scraps were turned into a costume for one of Amy's special dolls. Chris has presented thoughtful and uplifting devotions for many bridal and baby showers. She presented the honoree with the props for the devotions as a lasting and useful gift. Her insights and research have enhanced our women's Bible studies and led to deeper understanding of God's word. During our COVID-19 isolation, we found ways to meet outside and share meals and fellowship. We got to celebrate Paul's birthday together on Rosalind's patio while keeping our social distance. We found that God is faithful to close the gaps that time and distance can bring to relationships. We are trusting that he will continue to do that for us as the Davises move to Wisconsin, and we will not see them for long periods of time. Um, back to our sort of our timeline, both Amy and her brother were confirmed here, and Matt and Amy were married here in January 1st, 2001. I've heard, 2000, excuse me, 2000. Yes, the Y2K, there were little Y2K books everywhere. If you were alive, you knew what that means. If you were alive then, you know what that means. I personally have heard of uh, salmon dinners at their home and a fairy garden. Is that true? Is there a fairy garden over there? Okay. <laughs> For those who may not know, Paul was an aerospace engineer um, and worked at TRW and Northrop. He also taught at Caltech. Paul is currently the chief engineering officer for A Doll Like Me. 
He created the database for the orders and answered almost all of the question, answers almost all the questions on the website. Paul has been here in the choir here at Trinity and in Palestrina Ensemble. Brad Newsom shared that Paul has been a faithful singer in the chancel choir and men's chorus forever. He has been in Palestrina singing since around 2009 and has been a mainstay for the choir. Paul has sung many solos, duets, and ensemble pieces. He has been a blessing for us here at Trinity in music and many other areas. We will miss him and Chris very much. Rich Johnson, um, a choir member, says this of Paul. Paul Davis has been a special person to know through the years here at Trinity. Here are a couple thoughts about Paul I would like to share. Paul is musically gifted. I've had the privilege of serving with him on chancel choir for many years and have appreciated his fine bass baritone voice, his solo abilities, and his leadership ability in his section. He loves singing so much that he served on three choirs at once for several years. These included Trinity's Choir, a community choir as part of his former employer, TRW Northrop Grumman, and with Brad and Susan and me and others in Palestrina. Paul has been a great asset on the Trinity Church Council over the years, serving on various boards and also as council president. Paul brought to the table a fine combination of knowledge, focus, wisdom, and patience that all of us serving with him have really appreciated. Both he and Chris have served us well, and we will certainly miss them. We wish them success in their relocation to Wisconsin and with opportunities for service to Christ there. My friend Dahlia, the preschool director, was supposed to be here. But um, she's had Paul's number on speed dial, if you don't know. <laughs> Dahlia said, Paul has shown unconditional love and attention to detail for so many things that needed to be invented and fixed at the preschool and infant center, the infant center that he was instrumental in starting. From gates and sprinklers to paint patching, the small things, the mowing the lawn, I'm grateful to Paul for all he has done for the tiny humans at Trinity. If you didn't know, Chris was a teacher and counselor in the Los Angeles Unified School District. Chris has served on the school board here at Trinity. Carol Wright, who served with her on the school board says, if you could look up Chris Davis in the Bible, it would be linked to the name Barnabas. The, me the name means the encourager. Barnabas traveled with Paul as he was visiting churches and encouraged Paul in the work that they were doing for the Lord. I've worked with Chris Davis in a variety of ways here at Trinity, and she has become a treasured friend. When we served on the school board together, we often faced particular challenges. Chris taught us to take a, a deep breath and begin the next sentence with the words, be that as it may, or nevertheless. It was amazing how that brought peace to difficult situations. Whether we worked together on an event, shared in a Bible study, or work together to renovate the library, Chris was always, <coughs> all caps, an encourager. Chris uses a Bible that is many inches thick because it has several translations of the Bible side by side. Frequently during a Bible study, someone would ask Chris to read another version to help us more fully understand a particular passage. Matthew 20, 26 says, whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. Chris is truly one of his servants in a quiet, unassuming way. She will truly be missed here at Trinity. There must be a church in Wisconsin that is in need of an encourager, and she's coming your way. Chris has been a fixture at the Comforters. We like to call her Comforter Extraordinaire. And she is currently the chief design officer for a doll like me, and so is the doll's bodies. Sharon Sharp, one of the Comforters says, although I knew Chris from Women's Bible Study, and book club, it wasn't until I joined Comforters that I began to really become friends with her. Then we were asked to be on the call committee in 2018. During the next two long years, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but it was, we solidified our friendship. I don't know if I would have made it through without her. We shared angst, frustration, laughter, and lots of discussions. You see, Sharon says, you see, Chris and I don't agree on everything, but we have Jesus in common. So we can discuss our differences and truly listen to others' opinions. Then, during the pandemic, Chris, Chris tested me. She had bought a large quantity of fabric 
and asked if I would like to meet to cut the fabric into quilt squares. Of course, I was happy to. And we began to meet almost weekly, sometimes twice weekly, to organize the quilt room, pin quilts and sew edges. I will always remember those special times of her teaching me how to pin corners and helping me to match up fabric for quilt tops. Last April or May, Chris told me that she and Paul contacted a realtor in Wisconsin and that they would be moving closer to Amy and her family. She said it was partly my fault that she made this decision because I would tell her stories of getting together with my parents and kids. She was missing that and wanted to make the change. I'm sure it wasn't an easy, an easy decision, but I was and am partly in denial. I will miss all the fun times and discussions we have, but I wish them well in their new adventure. God bless. And this final message is for you all. So listen carefully. Dear Trinity family, this is a bittersweet letter for me to write as evidenced by the fact that I put it off for two weeks. But let me make one thing clear. It is not a goodbye letter. Rather, it is a thank you note. And until we meet again note. However, I have to clear my conscience first. Admittedly, the thing that's prevented me from writing this letter is guilt. There, I said it. We're all kidding ourselves if we don't admit that guilt is likely a Lutheran trait, am I right? <laughs> I feel guilty that I am taking my parents away from the Trinity family that we have loved for nearly four decades. That's a long time, and Lutherans aren't very good at change. I'm indebted to all of you for taking care of my parents while I have not been physically there. I'm at a loss for words when I try to explain how much that means. My mom and dad are my most valuable possessions and knowing that you care about them is everything. When I think about the last 40 years, your faces are in so many of their memories. I imagine them as a beautiful quilt and each of you are a piece of it. Each lovingly, each of you adds something beautiful and special, and it's been lovingly stitched together by the hand of God. He has created a work of art, and you are a part of that. Thank you for your hands, your physical hands, your supportive hands, your uplifting hands, your gently nudging hands, and your praying hands for all of those years. You, this Trinity family, have guided our family on our life path. I cannot think of a group of people to whom we are more indebted. You have seen us through good times and rough times, through marriages, births, deaths, anniversaries, struggles. You have been an incredible source of support. And when you've said, I'll pray for you, we know you mean it. There is something incredibly special about being brothers and sisters in Christ. If there's one thing that this pandemic has taught us is the value of relationships. Know that our hands are waiting for them here, and we promise that this is not an ending. We are simply adding to the quilt. God is the master quilter, and he has plans to do some more work on this masterpiece. The beauty of Christian love is that it transcends distance and location. This isn't goodbye, and it's expression of gratitude from me to you. Until we meet again, from Amy. And now can I have my friend Matt come on up? This, 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 this. Right. Right. Okay, here we go, we're ready. All right. What more can we say about two people who have touched the lives of so many here at Trinity in the community and helped Trinity touch lives around the world? We say we love you, we will miss you, and may God continue to bless you. Um, I know there are some gifts here that we'd like to present at this time. So Brad, I think you have something you'd like to share? Sure. Morning. Paul and Chris, I thank you for all your musical gifts, Paul, for you helping out with Palestrina and being the bass section of the chancel choir, and Chris, your wonderful attitude at Bells. I loved it. We have a book, okay? This is the newest hymnal that we're using is called All Creation Sings, abbreviated ACS. I don't know. Um, 
in it, we've had the bell players and the chancel choir leave you paragraphs of wonderful information and hopefully some funnies. Anyway, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. So, take these and read it at your room. All right. Thank you. And let's see. So now, Pastor Kevin is going to give some last minute words. Yeah, I just he's here. He comes. He's coming right now. <laughs> I hope you realize by now how much we love you. <laughs> but we're grateful that we have the opportunity to express this to you as well. Um, appreciation and personally, Chris, for serving on my call committee, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, for serving and, and being such a voice of reason and calm in amongst our leadership, thank you. Truly a gift that you both have brought and your family as well. I mean, it just keeps going on, doesn't it? As we think about our cow ministry that we're going to be starting up this week, Kalea gets to be a part of it because of Zoom. And so the relationships just continue to blossom. So it's always our hope and our prayer that we get to encourage you and remind you of how much God loves you and that you've been a part and a blessing of this place. So thank you. Thank you from the bottoms of our hearts. As we get ready to close, we wanted to, of course, sing with the songs with you as well. So we wanted to be able to pick a song as uh, was, there, was there any other pieces that we wanted to mention? No. So Paul and Chris, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you with mercy. And may the Lord lift up his face upon you and offer you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join us in singing um, Lord, uh, Lift High the Cross? And Brad, would you go ahead and lead us in this, please? Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore His sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our Savior trod. Yeah.
to your care. We pray for happiness and joy to be ahead for them waiting at their new home, for wisdom and guidance to be beside them, and for grace and truth to be behind them, pushing them onwards into your goodness. We know that you will always love and protect them wherever they go. As we ask in your holy name, Lord. Amen. All right, my friends, thank you so much for coming to, um, yeah, just the most bittersweet day. She's coming at me. Watch out. Here we go. Yes, ma'am. Give me two words. She's got two words. I just want to say thank you, thank you to all of you, all of the people who are here and those of you that have sent notes and, and sent encouragement and tell us we're doing the right thing. We think, we think we are doing the right thing to be closer to family. And if there's one thing the pandemic taught us, it's that we can't really be so far away from Amy and her family. You know, I look at each one of you and I can think of special things. I was telling Pastor Charlie, we have cards that he sent during the pandemic, sitting up, especially the one with the sheep. I just love that one. And Lucille has been with us through uh, the school board times and there are quilters here and book clubbers here and it's been wonderful it truly has i kind of had to pinch myself and make sure i wasn't listening at my funeral people <laughs> things but I, i'm pretty sure i'm still alive and that's why we're going now while we're still able to to do something we don't know we'll see what the next the next adventure is for us. So blessings to all of you, and thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you, and I just want to say amen to that. This has been our spiritual home for almost 40 years, and that uh, certainly leaves an impression. And it's going to be a lasting one, too. We'll maintain our connections even though it will be virtual most of the time. I'm sure we'll be back here off and on. And I always look forward to the fellowship that Trinity is famous for. So thank you very much for allowing this to be a home for us and a place that we can serve our Lord. Thank you. All right, friends, thank you again so much for coming and sharing your, your love, your prayers, your thoughts um, with Chris and Paul. Um, there is a, a trash can over there for anything you need to deposit. Um, again, we're just so grateful to Chris and Paul for um, all that they have done for our church and our schools. We will miss you terribly, um, but we know that God's got a plan and um, it's gonna be great, right? It's gonna be great. Maybe not for us right away. But it's going to be great. All right, my friends, thank you so much for coming this afternoon. We, we really appreciate it. Have a great, blessed rest of your day. And I will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the bright.